Hello and welcome to what is the first and hopefully one of many other monthly Astro Dog video guides that will help you learn about what there is to see in the night sky. The whole YouTube video thing is quite new to us, so we hope that you all enjoy what we have put together and we hope you find these guides to be a helpful monthly overview of what to look out for in the night sky. In this first edition of our night sky guide, we will be going over what to look out for during the month of January 25. The long and dark nights of January offer some excellent opportunities to do a bit of stargazing and this year there's lots of amazing night sky sights to look out for, including some very special celestial events that will take place at the start of the month. Just before we begin, we'd like to say that the following information for the most part is intended for the average stargazer or landscape astrophotographer that lives in the UK and doesn't own a large telescope. If we do cover anything that requires a telescope to observe, this will be mentioned along with the event in question. The following information given also assumes your viewing location is in the centre of the UK at a latitude of around 50 degrees north. If you live further north or south, the details and times given may vary slightly depending on your location, but are otherwise a good general guide. All the times given are universal time, also known as Greenwich Mean Time, and one last thing to note is that the depictions and descriptions of the general monthly night sky views are given for times when the sky is at its darkest, with the specific times stated in text along with the depictions. Okay, so without further ado, let's dive in. Sunrise and sunset times throughout January are as follows. On the 1st, the sun will rise at 8.25am and set at 4.01pm. On the 11th, the sun will rise at 8.21am and set at 4.15pm. On the 21st, the sun will rise at 8.10am and set at 4.32pm. And on the 31st, the sun will rise at 7.56am and set at 4.51pm. The moon will be paying some very close visits to the planets this month and will also be involved in a very special event that will be detailed in our highlight section. The moon reached its new phase on the 30th of December so we'll start the month as a waxing crescent. The first quarter will occur on the 6th, full moon on the 13th, last quarter will be on the 21st and the new moon will be on the 29th. For all the aurora hunters out there we are still within the middle of aurora season and when the skies are clear the long dark nights of January provide the perfect conditions to view the northern lights when they venture south to grace our skies. We are still in the middle of a period of time in the sun's 11 year cycle where the sun is more likely to show increased magnetic activity called solar maximum. Because of this there is the possibility that in 2025 we may be treated to more great auroral displays. Let's all keep our fingers crossed and if you would like to be kept in the loop with regular updates and alerts for possible aurora displays please head over to our Facebook page. For fans of the Milky Way, although the bright core of the Milky Way is not visible during the month of January, the fainter winter Milky Way can still be seen arching across dark skies. The fairly bright Cygnus region of the Milky Way is still visible in the early evening towards the northwest, and for those accomplished nighttime photographers, there is an opportunity to capture a west facing Milky Way arch in the early morning hours. On to general nighttime sights now. Looking towards the north throughout January, you'll be able to spot the familiar circumpolar constellations, with the constellations Auriga, Lynx, and Camelopardalis visible straight above near the zenith in the middle of the night. Draco the dragon reaches its lowest point in the sky, Leo the lion can be seen rising in the east, and the flying horse Pegasus can be seen setting in the west. January is a great time to try and trace the faint stars of the constellation Lynx and Camelo Pardalis whilst they are high in the sky. It's also a great time to try and spot the Andromeda galaxy that can be seen by the naked eye as a small smudge of faint light in the constellation of Andromeda. Looking south, the distinctive constellation of Orion the Hunter stands prominently, and together with Auriga, Taurus, Canis Major, Canis Minor and Gemini, all of the glorious constellations of winter can be seen clearly. The brightest stars from each of these winter constellations create an asterism known as the Winter Circle. It's a beautiful and photogenic portion of the night sky with lots of interesting things to observe within and around it and here's some of our favourite things to look out for. In the constellation of Taurus the Bull, you can find the Pleiades Star Cluster, also known as the Seven Sisters. When viewed with binoculars or a telescope, this open cluster reveals many more stars, and those with keen eyesight may also be able to pick out the faint glow of its surrounding reflection nebula. When observing Orion by eye, 
it is possible to make out a glow around the stars of the Hunter's Sword. This glow is from the Great Orion Nebula, one of the finest emission nebulae in the sky. Take a look with binoculars or a telescope and you'll be amazed by the structure that is revealed. Its colourful glow can also be easily picked up by the average DSLR or mirrorless camera and even some modern smartphone cameras too. At the bottom left of the winter circle you can spot our favourite star Sirius, also known as the Dog Star. Sirius is the brightest star in the night sky and is very easy to recognise. When viewing any star in the night sky it is possible to observe the twinkling effect that all stars display that is caused by atmospheric scintillation. Sirius however is by far the most impressive twinkler of them all. Stare at Sirius for a few moments and you can see for yourself. This amazing disco ball puts on a real show, twinkling profoundly and displaying all the colours of the rainbow. In this picture displaying the winter circle you can also spot the bright planets Jupiter and Mars that are currently visible in this area of the night sky. One extra treat to look out for in this photograph that only appeared here at the time of capturing this image is the hint of a red band of light stretching across the sky. This red band of light was actually a sub auroral arc that accompanied a large auroral display on this evening. The start of January will be a great time for observing the big four planets Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Towards the end of the month however, Saturn will become harder to spot as it will appear lower in the sky as it approaches the western horizon setting earlier throughout the month. If you wish to observe Saturn, the best time to do so will be in the early evening at the start of the month. Although it may not be the best time to view Mercury, the messenger can also be spotted by the Kosh binocular user just before sunrise in the constellation of Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer. Just like Saturn, Mercury will be easiest to observe at the start of the month, as on the 9th of January it will disappear from view as it heads towards the sun. Jupiter and Mars will remain prominent this month and will be easy to spot in the middle of the night, with both planets well placed for observation high in the sky all month long. January is a great time to view Mars in particular, as it reaches opposition on the 16th. Throughout January, Saturn can be found in the constellation of Aquarius the water bearer, Jupiter can be found in Taurus the bull. Mars starts the month located within Cancer the crab, before ending the month within the constellation of Gemini the twins. Venus starts the month alongside Saturn in Aquarius before ending the month in the constellation of Pisces the fish. Okay, now let's begin looking at our highlights for the month of January. There are quite a lot of celestial events to look forward to and starting 2025 with a bang will be a close encounter between the bright planet Venus and the Moon. On the 3rd of January 2025 we will be treated to views of a meeting between the 16% illuminated waxing crescent Moon and the bright planet Venus. The pair of luminaries can be spotted towards the southwest, tracing the sun's path towards the horizon during and following sunset. The moon and Venus will appear very close together in the sky, separated by only 2 degrees. Even though the moon will only be 16% illuminated, just before the moon disappears below the horizon, you may also be able to see a little bit of detail on the dark portion of the moon. This is due to an effect that happens when the moon is fairly close by to the sun during sunrise or sunset called Earthshine. Earthshine is caused by the sunlight reflecting off the Earth's surface and faintly illuminating the dark portion of the moon. Using binoculars or a telescope can help you make out this detail. The night of the 3rd of January will also host another special astronomical event, the peak of the Quadranted Meteor Shower. This annual winter meteor shower is considered by many astronomers as one of the strongest and most reliable meteor showers of the year known for lighting up dark skies with fast multicoloured meteors that can leave ionised gas trails. The Quadranted Meteor Shower is named so because the point in the sky where its meteors appear to radiate from, also known as the Radiant, is located in the now defunct constellation Quadrans Muralis, the mural quadrant. The shower is active between 28th of December and the 12th of January and its activity peaks on the evening of the 3rd of January. The moon phase is quite favourable for this year's quadrantids, with the waxing crescent moon being only 16% illuminated. The moon will also be setting fairly early at around 8.37pm, which is great for those of us staying out into the later evening to do some meteor watching. Although the majority of the quadranted meteors tend to be fairly faint, the shower is known to occasionally produce very bright fireballs, and the favourable lunar conditions 
mean that you may be able to spot lots of faint meteors from a dark viewing location. Activity for the Quadrantids is usually fairly quiet on the nights leading up to and following the peak, but the shower shows very high activity for several hours at its peak, with up to 120 visible meteors per hour under perfect conditions. This year's Quadrantid meteor shower will be most active during the bright early evening twilight at around 4pm, but will remain very active throughout the early evening as the skies become darker. Because of this early night activity, the Quadrantids will be a great meteor shower to take the kids out and enjoy a bit of family friendly meteor watching. For more detailed information on the Quadrantid meteor shower including tips and tricks to help you increase your chances of viewing meteors, please head to our Facebook page or website to read our comprehensive Quadrantid meteor shower post. On the day following the Quadrantid's peak, the Earth will reach a point in its orbit where it will be closest to the Sun known as Perihelion. However, on the same date, another very special celestial event that will be of much more interest to the average stargazer will take place. On the evening of the 4th of January, the amazing ring planet Saturn will appear to travel behind the Moon during an event known as a lunar occultation. This special event is our must-see highlight for January 2025. Although the Moon pays close visits to the planets very regularly, lunar occultations of planets are fairly rare events. The last lunar occultation of Saturn was in August 2024, but the last lunar occultation of Saturn before then was back in 2007. Because lunar occultations of planets are such a rare and unusual event, we recommend that you head out to try and view this lunar occultation for yourself. Last August, lunar occultation of Saturn involved an almost full 97% illuminated waning gibbous moon in the early morning twilight. January's occultation will occur in the darkening skies of the early evening and the moon will be a 25% illuminated waxing crescent. The occultation of Saturn will begin at roughly 5.18pm when Saturn's ring system will appear to touch the edge of the upper left dark portion of the moon. It will then take 52 seconds for Saturn to completely disappear behind the moon. If you are able to watch the event with a pair of binoculars or a telescope, you may also be able to spot Saturn's largest moon Titan disappear behind the moon at about 3 minutes afterwards. After Saturn completely disappears behind the moon, it will be hidden from view for 1 hour and 8 minutes before it may be seen beginning to emerge from the illuminated lower right portion of the moon at roughly 6.26pm. It will take around 65 seconds for Saturn to fully re-emerge from behind the moon and binocular or telescope users can spot Titan reappear about 3.5 minutes later. We can't wait to witness this special event and are hoping to capture some photographs of the occultation on the 4th. If you want to know more information on the lunar occultation of Saturn, please head over to our Facebook page or website. On the 9th of the 9th of January, the 81% illuminated waxing gibbous moon will be paying a very close visit to the beautiful open star cluster Pleiades, also known as the Seven Sisters or Subaru. At around midnight the moon can be seen approaching the stars of the Pleiades, and for those all night stargazers you will be able to see the moon travel in front of some of the bright stars of the Seven Sisters in the early morning of the 10th of January between 2 and 4am. Also keep an eye out for the bright planet Jupiter that can be found close by, roughly 10 degrees away from the Pleiades and the moon. On the 10th of January, the bright planet Venus will appear at its furthest distance away from the Sun in our post-sunset sky. This is known as its greatest eastern elongation. Venus is the second brightest object visible in the nighttime sky after the Moon. It is often the first star-like point of light that appears following sunset or the last point of light to disappear before sunrise. This characteristic gives rise to its nickname the Morning Star and the Evening Star. As one of the two inferior planets in the solar system, Venus will usually appear fairly close by to the Sun. Because of this, Venus can be quite hard to spot a lot of the time. However, for a fair amount of time surrounding its greatest eastern or western elongation, it is much easier to observe. Although it will appear at its furthest distance away from the Sun on the 10th, all throughout January, Venus will be very easy to spot. Look towards the southwest following sunset throughout January and you will be able to spot Venus appearing like a super bright star in the evening twilight skies. The night of January the 13th will host the first full moon of the year, which is also known to some as the Wolf Moon. The exact time the moon will reach max illumination will be around 10.30pm on the night of the 13th, but don't worry if you don't get a chance to see the moon then, it will still appear full on the adjacent nights either side of the 13th. If you want to see the first full moon of 2025, make sure to head out on the 13th. The night of the 13th into the morning of the 14th will also host another special celestial event. 
Not long after the moon reaches max illumination during the early morning hours of the 14th, the full moon will appear to pay an extremely close visit to the amazing red planet Mars. Throughout the night of the 13th into the morning of the 14th, you will be able to watch the moon travel closer and closer to the red planet until at around 4.30am the moon and Mars will make their closest approach to each other in our early morning sky. At this moment in time, the moon will appear to touch the red planet Mars when viewed by eye, and if you take a closer look with binoculars or a telescope, you may be able to see the moon and Mars separated by only 10 arc minutes. On the night of the 16th, the red planet Mars reaches what is known as opposition. An opposition is an event that occurs when a planet is in alignment with the Sun and the Earth, with the planet on the opposite side of the Earth compared to the Sun. During this time, the planet will appear larger and brighter than at any other time of the year. This means that on the night of the 16th and the nights surrounding the 16th, they may possibly be the best time of year to observe and or capture images of the red planet Mars, which will be shining at an impressive magnitude of negative 1.4. On the evening of January 18th, Venus will be paying a close visit to the amazing ring planet Saturn. Look towards the southwest just after the sunset on this date for a chance to view this close encounter. The pair of luminaries will be found together following the sun's path towards the horizon in the constellation of Aquarius, appearing to be separated by only 2.2 degrees in our evening twilight skies. And finally, our last highlight for the month of January, on the evening of the 29th, astronomers and astrophotographers around the globe will rejoice as the moon reaches its new phase, leaving the skies free from natural light pollution. This means that the night on the 29th and the night surrounding the 29th will be a great time to observe the faintest celestial objects in the night sky and to take photographs of the night sky. So there you go, there's lots of exciting astronomical events to look out for this January and we hope you all get to enjoy some of them when you are out under the night sky. Just before we finish up this inaugural edition of our night sky guide, we would like to mention that starting from the 9th of January, we will be hosting many public stargazing events over the weekends throughout the rest of January. So if you would be interested in visiting Visiting us at our cosy stargazing hub under the beautifully dark skies of Dolby Forest for a magical night of learning and gazing at the heavens, please head to our website astro-dog.co.uk for more information and to make a booking. We would also like to say a super massive thank you to all our followers and everyone that has shown their support for our small business. Your support means the world to us. If you know anyone who you think would like what we do, please feel free to invite them to our social pages and our YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed this first edition of what will hopefully be many night sky video guides and we hope the information in this video will help you all in seeing some of the amazing celestial events that we have throughout this January. If you like this video and found it useful please make sure to subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram for more regular astronomy content including regular updates on the northern lights. If you head out and enjoy the night sky at any point in the near future we wish you all good luck and clear skies.